starting to see the real impact of Hurricane Ida now, two days after it first made landfall in Louisiana Sunday night. The death toll has now risen to four, including two people who were killed Monday night in Mississippi after the highway collapse in the wake of heavy rains and flooding. Ten others were injured. More than a million people are still without power tonight, and officials in some areas have estimated it could take more than a month before power is restored. Federal officials also say some areas are facing water shortages. According to the Associated Press, which quoted federal officials, about 441,000 people in 17 parishes had no water, and an additional 319,000 were under boil water advisories. On top of that, a heat advisory is also in effect in New Orleans and the region. Weather forecasters estimate the heat and humidity made it feel like 105 degrees in some areas today, and it will make it feel like 106 degrees tomorrow, and that is without any air conditioning. Joining me now to discuss is the mayor of Baton Rouge, Sharon Weston Broom, and Louisiana Representative Royce Duplessis. Uh, mayor Broom, I, first I want to just start by understanding how the hurricane affected the city of Baton Rouge. Well, first of all, thanks for having me on. Um, actually, uh, the storm, Hurricane uh, Ida, was more of a wind event for those of us here in uh, the city and parish of Baton Rouge, we were really spared. However, we did have um, enormous impact from the wind as it relates to power outages and downed trees. We're in our second day of removing trees from the uh, roadways. And um, we estimate that we'll have approximately 400,000 cubic yards of debris. We are improving in terms of our power restoration. Uh, yesterday, 78% of our citizens uh, were without power, uh, and today we're down to 58%. Representative Duplessis, uh, you know, the, the conditions that people are describing in the city of New Orleans and in that region are just horrific uh, for people. You know, you live in Louisiana, I grew up in Louisiana. You know, the heat, the humidity, if it can feel like 105 degrees, there is no relief, there is no electricity in the city. Many people cannot drink the water. Uh, what is being done about providing relief for the people who are stuck in the city of New Orleans and in that region? And do you think it is sufficient? Certainly, Charles. Well, thank you for the question. Uh, I can tell you that we are uh, screaming from the top of the hill to get the resources to the people who need it, the people who you just described, the people who are not only waiting in these conditions that are quite unbearable, but when you add on top of that the uncertainty of when uh, normalcy will return, be it um, just electricity. Uh, I will just correct one thing. I, I do believe that the, the, the water is drinkable. It is my understanding in Orleans Parish, at least. I cannot speak to other parishes, but in Orleans Parish, we are not under any boil water advisory. So thankfully, the Sewage and Water Board has uh, done what it was supposed to do. But as it stands right now, uh, as I drive through my neighborhood and I drive through my district and I, I talk to uh, residents who are sitting on their porches, uh, their faces, they're just sitting there, they're waiting. Resources are on the way uh, on tomorrow. All throughout the city, we're going to have at least six, I think maybe seven, up to eight different uh, stations that we're calling pods that are going to be established and set up from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. There will be cooling stations. Uh, there's going to be water, food, and ice that's being distributed to residents who desperately need it. Um, these past two days have been incredibly difficult for the people of New Orleans and, and, and really the people of Southeast, Southeast Louisiana, especially and even uh, Mayor Broom City of Baton Rouge. But uh, the, 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 the city is still without power and there's no way to get gas and uh, to try to function in those kind of conditions is very troubling. I know that resources are on the way. Uh, there's more that needs to be done. Uh, I, I can say that Mayor Cantrell is, is really leading uh, with force and I, I think she's been doing a very good job under these circumstances. 
What, what, re what resources are on the way? I'm just curious of what you can tell us tonight that you know is going to arrive in the city of New Orleans. and, and Absolutely, yeah. I, I know that water is on the way. I know that food is on the way. Uh, I mean, th that's what people need. I know that ice is on the way. Uh, we have food trucks that are coming down. Uh, so those are, those are, we have generators. We have generator technicians. And, and uh, I probably the thing that I've left out that I should have uh, mentioned the is that we government? have linemen coming from other parts of the country. I'm sorry. Supplied by the federal government. These these supplies are these supplies are fired by, supplied by the federal government or FEMA or someone. Yes, yes, and my coordination has been with the local uh, NOSEP, New, uh, New Orleans Emergency Management, as well as the state, and and in coordination with the federal government. Okay. Mayor Broom, uh, during Katrina, many of the people who evacuated New Orleans headed to your city of Baton Rouge. Are you again playing host to, to uh, New Orleans evacuees? And, and how does that impact uh, the city uh, that, that you run? Well, first of all, let me just say that uh, we are a family here in Louisiana. And uh, when one area hurts, we all hurt. And so um, while we had minimal impact compared to our sister city, New Orleans, uh, we certainly have two shelters that are up and running. Uh, one at the F.G. Clark Activity Center at Southern University and the other at the Raising Canes River Center. And so we've offered that to our citizens here in Baton Rouge uh, for any type of refuge they may need. And we've also offered it to any of our neighbors in surrounding areas that have been impacted. Uh, at the end of the day, restoration uh, is a common denominator for all of us. In fact, uh, while we were not, as I said, impacted as heavily as some of our other cities, I have sent some of our uh, resources, uh, search and rescue teams, et cetera, to help assist those areas uh, who need more assistance. And so uh, for us to recover, it's going to take a team effort of all of us working together. So let me just ask you a, a technical question, Mayor. You know, how do these... Uh kind of centers work in a COVID age? Do people have to be tested before they can go into one of these centers or how does that work? That's a very good question. Um, we are dealing with dual emergencies, if you will. We have, um, we're dealing with this recovery from Hurricane Ida against the backdrop of a pandemic. And so when people go to one of the uh, centers, one of the shelters, if they are not vaccinated, they will have to take a COVID-19 test. If they test positive for COVID-19, they will have to be isolated in, uh, away from uh, the general population. 